jackpot, baby. Jackpot indeed. Oh, oh God. The ah! Thank you for picking the mic, Akari. Sorry. The series is I'm... back. Oh, my second franchise is back, baby. And, and I am just gushing. I want to get this out in the open. <laughs> but first things first, everybody, welcome to the Shooting Star Cast episode 11. Yes, it is. I am Leo Force. I am Rado. I am And I'm Akari, who is currently being the biggest Devil May Cry fanboy on the planet at the moment, because after 11 years since the last main entry, not including the mediocre reboot, Devil May Cry back is back with a vengeance. Yep. Mm-hmm. And, and it was also the uh, first one I played. Yep. Rado, I finally got this, this wolf to actually play his first Devil May Cry game. And what were your thoughts on it? It was fun. How would you, as someone who is more of a Bayonetta fan, how would you compare the combat to it? Uh, the combat, the combo, it, the co- the combo attacks in DMC Five were, it felt similar to Bayonetta's, but there definitely was a lot more uh, skill involved with them. I could tell. Oh yeah. So for starting off with personal thoughts, personal little mini review of what I thought about the game. Honestly, I have been a fan for the longest time of the series and i would say catcom has knocked it out of the park this one is being probably the best entry of the series by far in terms of story and characters which honestly i love the fact that we have three different variants of combat for her we got nero with his devil breakers we got dante with his styles and we have newcomer v who uses his summoning skills to summon demon familiars to do attacks for him he's, and ba- I, he's gotta basically say, the major he's damn good at it yeah in a sense mm-hmm and just how tense this, I mean, it has some of the boss battles. I mean, obviously, I know you got Devil Trigger still stuck in your head. I downloaded it recently, finally. <laughs> finally, yes. after how many after how many months it's been out? Well, first off, I didn't have money in my, in my uh, uh, iTunes account to get anything for the longest time, so that's one reason. Okay. <laughs> and, I couldn't so, be arsed, and I couldn't be arsed to get money. And yeah, there we go. Yeah. And second of all, so, I, I wanted to play the game before I get the yep. song. And there you go. And overall, I would say it's a highly recommended, a great entry to the franchise. I'm anxious to see what they're going to do from here. This this Tiger <laughs> game, a perfect 10 out of 10 for being, like I said again, the best entry of the series. I'd give it a 9 out of 10 if only because I do have some issues, like... I don't like the fact that you can't uh, switch between uh, uh, Devil, Devil, Breakers. Devil Breakers with Nero. Uh, you can, but you need to use the Pasta uh, Bringer to do that. I don't I don't have the Deluxe Edition, so I don't have the Pasta Bringer. Yeah. Uh, that's, that. that's 14 more bucks for that DLC. I, <laughs> yep. So, I ain't getting that. And... Oh, the, 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 I think my other little issue is that uh, both Trish and Lady did jack shit. Sure, that that is a bit of a. I don't want to go into spoiler territory, or, but they did do kind of go through a lot of crap. Well, yeah, I know so. both of them have been gotten turned into demons because of uh, the big bad. But I'm like, Trish literally got back on her feet like that and was ready to kick ass. Mm-hmm. From what I've read, they might be working on some DLC that involves the ladies. If they're doing that, then it'll, bo- it'll boost it up like half a point, in my uh, opinion. They are doing the... Uh, yeah, I agree with that. Uh, I forget what it's called. It's like the Bloody Tower? Yes, they are doing the Bloody Tower. Yeah, that's coming out in uh, April 1st, if I recall right. Mm-hmm. So that'll be something to do. Yes. Um, but I guess, is there anything else you want to say about DMC before we get on with our weeks? I would just say, if you guys, if anyone likes action games or likes something, if you've never tried the series before, I would just go and pick this game up or give it a try. I I would say it's a a high recommendation. And they do have, like, that little, uh, movie thing at the beginning that kind of explains, like, the plots of the previous DMCs, so... 
That's sort of how. Although for some people, that gave more questions than answers. Yeah, that, especially, that's actually true. Especially considering the fact that they made the anime canon, and Morrison was white in that, and now he's black. That was one continuity problem I did have with the game. I'm like, wait, what? I'm like, where did they? Like, yeah. Why? I, but I beyond have... that, they didn't change anything, so it's just like whatever. Yeah. I have only one question, and I don't. I haven't heard anything about it, so. Just tell me whether it is, I needed you two to tell me whether or not this is true. Does Lucia come back at all? Lucia? Oh, Lucia, the the girl, the the main girl from two. And no, she's not in it. Oh, okay. No, her silhouette shows up in the movie. Okay. Because yeah. there was some, there was some like when 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 that I think that detail was leaked out at some point because people were wondering whether or not she was actually going to show up. No. Oh. Well, we, what we do know is that 2, now in the timeline that Catcom officially released, that 2 takes place before 4. Yeah. So the timeline is 1, no, no, no. is 3, 1, anime, 2, and then 4, four if I recall no, right. No, I thought, actually I thought, no, I was told anime is after 2. I'm not Does it really matter at this point? It, it can happen concurrently. My question <laughs> is, what? and then after 5... Is SMT uh, Shin Megami Tensei Three Nocturne with special Dante uh, appearance? No, I think that actually happened during two. Seriously? Yes. <laughs> because that's the version of Dante that they use for the game. All right, all right, I'll that's, give you that. That's the version of Dante we tend to ignore. Yeah, the only reason uh, Dante got in there into SMT is because I believe the the uh, demon designer for SMT. Was hired to you to uh, design both Dante and Virgil's uh, Devil Triggers. Ah, uh, yeah. Still, it's it's still it's rather an inter- interesting continuity. Yeah, it is. All right, uh, Muzi, how was your week? Eh, it was okay. Right. Mostly getting some cleaning done. The house was horrible. Uh- <laughs> Anything game wise? Uh, been playing some more Horizon, some Final Fantasy IX, leveling some more in that, because otherwise I have to do it later, and it's a pain in the ass. Uh, <laughs> I preloaded Final Fantasy VII and the um, Ace Attorney trilogy on my Switch. Hmm. Because then all I have to do is wait for them to come out. <laughs> all righty. Sounds good. So, uh, anything else? Uh, movies? I almost got to see Captain Marvel again, but uh, sadly I couldn't go. <laughs> alrighty, alrighty. And, but uh, I did get a uh, pre-release ticket for Shazam, because next weekend Fandango's doing one of those pre-shows that's like at least like a week or two early. Hmm. Thank you. That movie's gonna be fun. How about it? Better be good after all the backing they put behind it. Alrighty. DC is desperately trying to catch up with Marvel. I think they're learning. <laughs> they might be learning. They might. Who knows? And mm-hmm. then I couldn't stop watching the new Avengers trailer. Oh. <laughs> God, I am so disinterested in this in Marvel. It's all good. Bonk. Hey. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm just not into superheroes. It's fine. It's all good, dude. All right. Um, Akari, how about your week? Besides DMC, uh, not much work. Rating. And rating. Pokemon rating. <laughs> And I think the only bad thing with me right now is the fact that I have been suffering from lower back pain for the last week and a half, and it uh, might want to see. Welcome to my world. It sucks. Might want to see a chiropractor. I've been taking meds. I've been using uh, ice uh, ice hot to kill it off, and it's been working. So I'm almost there. That's good. That's good. All right. As long as it's getting better. If it was still there, I'd say see a chiropractor. It's. It's not too as bad, and plus the fact, um, 
what else is there going on? But I think probably after this whole thing is over, I might go back and play the original three DMC games. Probably. <laughs> Do you have the collection? Yep, I got the collection. I got four special edition on PS4. I got the the reboot. I'm actually tempted to play that one again too. Wonderful. Since I made up to Dante, I made it up to Dante Must Die mode in DMC Five, and I'm like, nope, I'm not that suicidal yet. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, there's even harder difficulties. Yep, there's that. There's heaven and hell, and then there's hell and hell. Hell and hell. Basically, yeah it it's gonna hurt. Hell and hell. The half and half of half and half of the video game difficulties. <laughs> half and half. But basically. Basically, everything dies in one hit, including you. Oh, shit. Yeah, that's what <laughs> Hell and Hell was. Even in, it was introduced in the reboot. That if you uh, Heaven and Hell basically means you die in one hit, but everyone takes is harder to kill. Hell and Hell basically means everything dies in one hit, including you. Even the final boss? I think, they, I think so. Well, just need to act first. <laughs> yeah. Oh, que la. All right. Uh, Rado, what about your week? All right. So other than for me, for DMC, I had beaten it on human mode and I had started playing it on devil hunter mode. I had gotten halfway through before I had to take a break. Uh, for the most part, I've been fine. Uh, my hand has been bugging me mm-hmm. for the longest time. I went to the doctor recently and they said that I might have some nerve damage in my ulnar region. Mm. And I have some muscle atrophy, so I'm going to be seeing a specialist about it uh, sometime probably later in the month. I need to set up an appointment, and my mom's going to help me with that. Uh, Other than that, reading more Shield Hero light novel. So I'm now way ahead of the light novel compared to Legend. Mm -hmm. Uh, We should mention, for the record, uh, Legend couldn't be with us. He had uh, family issues to deal with. Involving, I believe, taking a shower out and putting it back in. Well, putting a new one in. Yeah. Anyway, continue. Um, let's see. Other than reading Shield Hero, I have been drawing still. I'm kind of just taking it easier now on drawing. And I recently picked up a book uh, because of a YouTuber I watched, Nick Nocturne of Nightmind is doing a review on a book called House of Leaves. And I opened it up, and it's a whole big pile of what the fuckery. <laughs> there are, uh, there's multiple people talking. They're each in a different font. One thing kind of trails off into another. Uh... There are pages where there's words written in backwards, so I need to hold it up to a mirror. There's sections that are upside down, so i got to flip the book over. There's some where I need to read it on its side. And in a mirror. And in a mirror. And then there's pages that are either completely blank or have words in diagonals. or this motherfuckery. I'm showing Leo a page. Uh huh. The book's upside down, by the way. Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> so, from what I can tell, it's about a guy and his wife finding out that there's a room in their house that seems to be ever expanding into a long labyrinth, meaning that their house is basically the TARDIS. Mm. Uh. It's bigger on the inside than it is the outside. Uh. Yeah, it is It is all sorts of, of crazy doohickery. And, and this one guy is recounting it, t- taking a look at all the notes that he's finding about this incident. And mainly it's just him trailing off into uh, his own life issues, him talking about fucking a stripper and stuff like that. Oh my god. Yeah, it is crude in some places. <laughs> it, is, it is quite crazy, I must say. Yeah, and it is disorienting. Hell of a horrific read, though. Because I was reading this last night, and I just heard, like, the house around me settle. <laughs> and I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, that's, that's certainly uh, an experience. Yeah. Jump three feet. Wanted to, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, did someone break in? 
It's the most exercise you've had all day. Oh, shush. I've walked effort already. I'm kidding. I'm joking. Hey. Anyway, other than that, I technically finished the Spyro Reignited trilogy. Uh, I'm going to have uh, Leo help me with the bonus content. Because R- Rado can't fly. No, I just hate vehicle <laughs> sections. Oh, yeah, there is a vehicle section. I completely forgot. Yeah. Yeah, that race is annoying. Good, because you're doing it. O- only because of the fact that I like getting all the gems. <laughs> and so that's really what took me for the longest part was to get all the gems. <sighs> So, when we do a Let's Play of, uh, like, the first Spyro game, expect Leo to do all the flying missions. <laughs> a that, lot of them. A lot of them, because I ain't doing them. Because fuck that shit. Because, <laughs> if I remember correctly, your issue was you can't ha- you can't handle it, inverted controls. Exactly. Fl- inverted flying controls is like, yeah! <laughs> You can't even alter them in the options. That's the sad part. I know. And so it constantly fucks me up. Like, if I had enough practice, I could do it, but... You don't have time for that. No. Not when you're reading uh, eldritch horror novels. It's not eldritch. It sounds eldritch. Yet. Uh Uh-huh. But, uh... Yeah, that's pretty much been my week. Other than taking care of a house and a dog. So, Leo, how's your week been? Uh, I've ha- I've had a good week. I've had a good week. Um, I finished playing West of Loathing finally. Mm. So I did most of the side quests. I did the main important two, which is preventing the cows from coming back home. <laughs> which is out of con- for context, it is an apocryphal event in which demonic cows return from hell. And over to run the earth. Okay, then. And then the other one is making sure that a necromancer doesn't come into power. All right, then. Which involves a, a basically a scavenger hunt of finding bits and pieces of clues that eventually lead you to his main lair. Huh. And go, that leads to an exorbitant boss rush of skeletons that you have to destroy uh, before you can confront the big bad. And isn't this yeah, whole thing in, like, stick figure? It is all in stick figure, yes. Which which gives it a very... Which means that it relies heavily on its dialogue and its whimsical humor. Okay, then. Um, I've already talked about it to death before, but I'm glad that uh, Markiplier is doing the Gun Manor DLC, which is basically a mega, uh, mega level slash dungeon that involves you uh, banishing 13 ghosts from this haunted house. Hmm. Oh god, I just remembered. You said 13 ghosts. The 13 ghosts of Scooby-Doo! You know they're making a, a movie that yes, keeps the cat are. Off. Yes, they are. Flim Flam <laughs> is back. Where the fuck did he even go? Um, I, if I remember the reviews correctly, Hollywood. Or if I remember the preview correctly, it was like, he did something in Hollywood for a while and then he got fed up with it. Huh. Do, you, do you, either of you guys remember watching that cartoon? Oh yeah. 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 Wasn't Scrappy Doo a part of it too? If he what I I think I I think he was. Yeah, that may because I, I remember him. Yeah, being, he was because he hung out with Flim Flam. Yeah, the there you go. That's yeah. Exactly so right. double the annoyance. Yes. <laughs> the thing is, at least Flim Flam is actually useful. Yeah. <laughs> You know what's the weirdest thing? What? Scrappy Doo was invented to make sure that the series wasn't canceled when it w- back in the day. Yeah. And then everyone ends up hating Scrappy Doo. Yes, he is the Poochie of this of, of Scooby Doo. <laughs> he's like pre Jar Jar. Oh, that's terrible. At least he's not racist. But then again, that sixties cartoon, so it was more eighties, nineties by the time that Scrappy came in. Oh yeah, that's right. Because that was sort of the whole point of him. Um, I played out a, I, I demoed a new ga- uh, a, a a recent game that I'm probably going to purchase in the near future, the Texorcist, the story of Ray Biblia. <laughs> Exorcist? Exorcist. Text exorcist? Correct. So the premise is the it is the year 1999 and we have no pope. 
Okay. And which is which is effectively sold the theocracy of of the Catholic Church to a halt. And so the priests are doing diddly and demons are starting to roam the earth. <laughs> so one one renegade priest, Ray Biblia, who can literally use uh, word bullets by by t- by having the player type out uh, ancient prayers to go ahead and exercise demons. This sounds like a Bible, t- uh, a, a, a church teaches typing kind of game. It would be if it wasn't for the fact that it's, it, it doesn't work like a text typer. In most text typers, they usually start off with ASDF and teaching you to do keys. No, it just drops you straight and starts making you do Bible verses for, <laughs> for attacks. And, oh, and, and the difficult thing, here's, here's the tricky thing. You, you have to type out with the full keyboard. But your movement is with the arrow keys. Oh, God. So the only way you can actually attack, as it were, is to stand still. <laughs> and all of your fights are bullet helps. What the actual fuck? Mm-hmm. <laughs> also, interacting with the world, you must type out the word in order to do the interaction. Oh. So if I want to say look at a chair, I have to actually type out examine. Oh god, it's like one of those old school text adventure games. Yes, it is. Ugh. <laughs> so, uh, I've, been, I've been going through that, and then lastly, I have been replaying uh, Dark Cloud 2 with the intent of getting higher scores and not fucking up the uh, uh, Fruit of Eden glitch. The Fruit of Eden glitch? Yeah, so I don't think you... I don't know if you came across this during the Let's Play. Probably not. But uh, there are actually... There's actually a... A rigged box in the, in the Stardust Canyon level. Where if you open it, it will not allow one of the fruits... One of the fruits to spawn when you go through the second route uh, for finding the elemental gems. Okay, and the the, you, the only way to make sure that that fruit of Eden spawns is to not open that particular box, which is on the corner of the weapon shop, until you've unlocked the star path. Already then. Huh. And that and that ensures that both characters have even numbers from their fruits of Eden. Okay, then I probably did encounter that glitch. I just didn't realize it. Yeah, it, apparently it is a well-known glitch within the uh, dark. There is a community, by the way. There's a Dark Cloud 2 community. Can we get a Dark Cloud 3, please? Everyone has been waiting, has been complaining about that as well. It also made me realize Dark Cloud and Dark Cloud 2 were the first, were probably among the first roguelike games. Hmm. If you, if you think about it that way. Because the dungeons were randomly generated every time you went in. Yeah, they were. And if you weren't prepared, you were going to die. Well, it, un- unlike roguelike games, it is a permit death. Yeah, I kind of oh, kind of hate that aspect of roguelikes. <laughs> right, but I think that I think that it's kind of harkens back to more of the dungeon crawler type games um, that I've played. Some of them I can, some of them I don't, but I understand the the appeal behind it. Hmm. Uh, I think that's about it for my week. All right then. So you guys ready to go into the news? Let's get this bullshittery out of the way. No matter yes. what good or bad it is. Yeah, we have uh, <laughs> we have some choice stories today. Let's see. Uh, let's start off with the news hot out of Japan, where uh, Pierre Taki is under arrest for coke possession and is put two games' uh, lifespans into jeopardy. Really? Yes. At least in Japan. Because uh, Pierre Taki was not only a crucial voice for uh, Judgment, the Yakuza spinoff, he was also the voice of Olaf in Kingdom Hearts 3 for the Japan. So wait, he was, so he was snorting Olaf. <laughs> yes, Olaf was snorting himself, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Essentially and, for Kingdom Hearts, though, all they're doing is um, releasing an update that takes his voice out of the game. Right, which is easy, but Judgment is um, mocat. So yep. they have to rework all of that, and he is a major villain in that game, apparently. So they need to, like, rig a new villain's they, experience. They need to get a new villain. They gotta re-rig him to do all the lines over. Ooh. So, 
Kingdom Hearts. At least Hearts... they don't have to redo the entire game, though. Yeah. So there's at least that. At least oh with, my god! At least with Kingdom Hearts, it's just uh, update well, voice well, actor. Right. That's simple. And, and and really, Olaf, it's not as big of a deal as they say someone like Sora or Goofy. Oh yeah, if that was the case, then who? Yeah, that would be bad. Mm. But uh, but yeah, people have been wondering whether or not this is going to alter uh, Judgment's release date in the in the Americas. Just Probably. because, the, most likely, just because of the way Japan is, if you couldn't tell, really, really retentive when it comes to uh, drug uh, drug offenses. Oh yeah, drug offense. Yeah, yeah, that's the kind of fucked up thing. Uh, you uh. Like the manga, it's funny. You will be arrested for life for holding the tiniest amount of drugs, or if you're not from there, you're permanently exiled from the country. Right. However, fucking a uh, fourteen-year-old, totally legal. I would like to remind you, as 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 probably as the internet has la- uh, yelled from the rooftops before. Japan's age of consent is different than America's. I know, and it's still fucked up. And it, and it fucks up every time they have one of their weird weird sex games get translated to the U.S. Because suddenly everyone ages four years. Yeah. I mean, it's just the fact that this kind of proves that Japan's a more mature country than we are. Yeah, in a weird roundabout sense, yeah. Yeah, it still fucks me up that the Roni Kenshin mangaka turned out to be a pedophile. And apparently... Was friends with the mangaka for Toriko, who before writing Toriko got arrested for having sex with an underage prostitute. You, you would think that would have come up in the job interview at some point. Yeah. Nope. Anyway. Japan, ladies and gentlemen. Japan is weird, <laughs> is our point. The game's not even supposed to be out in the U.S. till June anyway. I'm expecting that's going to be delayed a couple of months. We probably will hear something at E3 saying that it's delayed oh, until probably likely. third quarter. Probably. The end of third quarter, early fourth. They're um, normally pretty good about letting people know. Let, let's go from real world drama to video game drama. Uh, with uh, Bioware replacing uh, Bethesda for uh, Foul Up of the Week? Yeah, pretty much, because... There's one on the notes, but there's actually two more I have to add to this. But first, uh, Bioware confirms that it's that its actual programming for the game is actually bricking PS4s by accidentally shutting off the fans. Really? Yeah, it's shutting They've off the fans. They already put the update out to fix it. I right. know. They put the update out to fix it. But what it was doing was it was causing the fans to not turn on overheating the systems, and frying the circuits. Ah, that's why I was doing that. Okay. This makes me glad I never got into this game, in the, or hyped into this game in the first place. Yes. Yep. Now, the other bugs that I should talk about are the fact that the starting weapon in the game actually does more damage than N-tier level ga- weapons. The numbers Which that it shows... They've already fixed that as well. There was a several gigabyte date patch yeah yeah, yeah where but they went through and they've already changed all of that yeah well i want to kind of explain the things like i can explain how it was the the guy test the guy who did it was testing it mm-hmm. he fired a gun like an end tier gun at an enemy and he did one two three four okay the guy's dead he pulled out the starting pistol one two three dead hmm the numbers that, that it was, the number it was showing was a lie. Mm. And there's still also an infinite health glitch as well. That's the third thing. So I wouldn't mind that one. <laughs> I, I, I do know that uh, one of the earlier bugs that they were dealing with was, um, and I believe I talked about it on the show last time, was that their number generator for end tier weapons was didn't have a proper end bound. So it went to a integer it couldn't process, and therefore it set the values to zero. Yeah, so... So apparently they still haven't fixed that particular system yet, because we're still having issues with it. Oh, joy. So... I'm just laughing, because at this point, every week, somebody's just looking for another company to trash on. I mean, it certainly feels like that, but at the Before same time... Before that, it was Bethesda. Right, but I mean... Now it's Bioware. Give it another week, it'll be a completely different company. I agree, but I think at the same time, like, if they are still having these big, huge bugs, 
I think that th that's appropriate that they should have to face the ridicule. Remember, there used to be a time in which you couldn't just digitally update or fix a game when it came out. You would have to recall it, buy all the, get all the copies back, and then out of their own pocket, then go ahead and issue the fix. Yeah, there was no such thing as a day one patch. Right. I do like the one difference between how Bethesda was handling it handling everything yeah um, they're fixing it yep <laughs> well they're fixing it but that's bethesda still hasn't fixed fallout 76 they've just pretty much given up on it yeah they're letting fallout 76 die surprisingly yeah, they're, they're not even gonna bother like completely fixing it bioware is at least fixing their game and they're also going to add more free content like we're sorry this happened we're fixing this, and we're also going to do this. Well, they're still trying to survive, but honestly, it's... I hate to say this, but Bioware is basically a dead man walking at this point. Yep, nothing yep. can save them at this point. Um, the only thing they can save Actually, them at this point... Actually, yeah, they can, because at this point, they've already got a um, actual oh, Mass Effect, not Andromeda. They're going to be working on that, and they've also got... A Dragon Age game that they're working on, and those are their two, is, you know, biggest things. Mm -hmm. Oh, you say that. I have a bad feeling that uh, that Bioware is going to end up getting uh, demolished entirely by EA, like it does with so many other companies. That it... no, you know what they're going to do? They're going to sell it off, and then somebody who actually manages to manage companies will buy it. <laughs> That's not EA's uh, modus operandi. It tends nope. to, it dismantles. Actually, they've done that. There are several studios where they're like, oh, look, somebody actually does want to buy this because they can make more money by selling the company if somebody's interested in it than ripping it apart and selling the pieces. It all depends on which one's going to make them more money uh, and if somebody's interested in buying that company. Yeah, but I tend to see more companies get destroyed than sold also, off. Also, they also don't want to lose all the money that they're getting from the Star Wars online game, because that's still, like, going severely strongly. I don't know with how. With tons of people still playing it, so they're making money off that. Yeah, the, uh, the never underestimate the MMO market. Quite a bit of money off yeah. of that. Uh, I, I will say to Bethesda's defense, um, their issues, I think, are more reputational right now than it is uh, with their product. The uh, I do know they did release a patch this week, although there hasn't had anything, ha nothing has broken yet. So, to my knowledge, they but are still fixing it. The problem is, is people are starting to get bored with it only because, for one, you know, it didn't really work right when it came out. Right. But, you know, that could have been fixed. They're not adding enough to it right now for people to do. Right. I, I think... Um, I think the, the the rumor we heard a while back about them wanting to do a Fallout 3 remaster is what they're trying to do because it's their, in case of emergency, break, break they're gonna glass They're going to make plan. money off that, essentially. Yeah. So uh, now, now the question is, is it just going to be a texture upgrade, like with Dark Souls remastered? Or, or is it, it going to be, be like, a... we're rehauling the system upgrade, you know? I mean, we're, I'm, I'm more anticipating the Dark Souls remaster just because... The modding community as a whole, when it comes to Bethesda games, generally knows that they do not that there are certain flaws with their system. Yeah. So I'm anticipating more of the latter, but then again, Skyrim Special Edition was basically the same thing, and even then, uh, there's still a large amount of community there. Mm -hmm. So Ed, we'll have to wait and see uh, how that fares out. Uh, yeah. Next so up, we have Octopath Traveler getting a prequel. A prequel on mobile, of all things. Yeah. Which we may not even get. <laughs> yeah, and because here's, here's the thing. I hate it when companies do shit like this. Because here's the thing. Uh, Namco Bandai mm -hmm. made a Tales game recently. They showed an awesome trailer for it. And it turns out... It's on mobile mm. and iOS, like for tablet. Right, right. And I'm like, the concept of it alone looked interesting where it was a world where these everyone had to hold onto a magical crystal. Mm -hmm. And through a big crystal in the main city, it could oversee everyone through those crystals. And 
basically, if you're caught committing a fraud, a, a sin, or like murder, theft, or anything, the crystal you possess would turn into a brand on your body, and you would be uh, chased down by these Watcher-like people. So, a magical minority report. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> oh God. But it's not it's not predicting the crimes, it's broadcasting the crime that has happened to everyone. Oh, magical big brother then. Magical big brother, <laughs> basically. <laughs> and yeah, but people who choose to accept the sin or choose to overcome it get magical power. Provided they aren't killed by the watcher. So Okay. It's called blood sin. I was gonna say So you can commit crime. And if sir, you somehow survive the gauntlet, you get powers? Yes. So you're rewarded for committing the crimes, provided you actually pull it off. I don't get it. I don't get it either. I was going to say, like, so it's magical purge, but not really? But, like, what? <sighs> it's hurting my brain the more you, the more you try know. to explain it. I love the concept <laughs> video for it, because it looked cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it was only just a glimpse of that. You know what I realized why they're putting on mobile on mobile? Why? They have to make up for all the bravest. For fan Final Fantasy all the bravest. Yeah. Cuz that the, 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 I I think it's like we have this concept, we could put it on mobile or we could put it on consoles, but we still have this kind of a black stain that we want to go back to this market at some point. We need to give a good face showing that we're not going to fuck things over again. Hey Square, how about instead you port Bravely Default and Bravely Second as well as Bravely Third, because I know you're working on it, onto the Switch? Uh, right. you, you hear a you hear a Square Enix executive like, um, uh, we will announce Brave Trilogy shortly. <laughs> yeah, that's what it's gonna be. It's, yeah. they're gonna pull a bayonet. Well, two essentially, on us. they're not gonna say, "Hey, yeah. we'll these to the Switch until they have the third one done. Yeah. yeah, and then it and then it comes out as a trilogy. Yeah. Oh my god, I'm just picturing like Bravely to follow with kind of like slightly upscaled models and graphics and I'm kind of like going we're let's playing that if it comes out. Oh yeah, there's no way we cannot at <laughs> yeah. that point because now it's on an actual console. Yeah, we could actually record it for God's sake so we have an actual honest to god <laughs> RPG to record. When was the last time we recorded an RPG? I think Dark Souls is has been our RPG. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> no, right. no. Vesperia. Well, we tried that. <laughs> we tried that and we had issues. Um, all right, then. We actually never have done a proper RPG. No, we have not. But um, Hell, even well, Dark, Dark Cloud even was... Uh, I would say Dark Cloud or Kingdom Hearts even, because both of those are kind of... They're in the action RPG category. Yeah, but then again, so was Dark Souls. Fair enough. Um, we have news out of Death Stranding and Kojima Productions, which is saying that uh, there will be a delay for Death Stranding. There was even a release date for it? Well, they nope. were supposed to do it in, I think, uh, Ju June, July... Uh, like an announcement for even, it or something? No, even Kojima said there wasn't a release date. Okay. So, they're he having He was some... like, I could, you know, they're like, he very well could have just kept his mouth shut about it being delayed, but he's like, I just want to be realistic with you guys. We don't have a release date, and it's going to get delayed a little bit. Okay. So people can't like sit there and go, well, you got to give us a release date. You got to give. They've already, you know, come out and said, hey, this is going to take a little bit longer than we thought. I, I mean, uh, we, we're in the season of where people are starting to say whether or not they're going to E3. I felt like if there was a time to do that, it would be at E3. Like this basically changes nothing, and that's sort of why I'm confused about this thing. But well, yeah. if they if they do it now, they don't have to do it at E3. Because a lot of times if people say that a game's getting delayed while they're doing a thing at E3, people get even more pissed. Okay. Because all so, they were thinking was, hey, we're going to get a release date because they're at E3. Right. Yeah. So it's better, be a safe, it's better be a safe than sorry kind of thing, besides the fact that, honestly, with how big and grand this game might be, and I'm putting it in quotes, I think this game might be probably until, like, next year, probably, at the latest. Well, and wouldn't people rather have it actually done and good versus a patch like every other day. <laughs> I, I think Kojima, yeah, of all, I think Kojima of all people 
has best experienced that. Yeah. And I think he, I think he empathizes with our viewpoint on that, and that's why he's uh, doing it yeah, the way he that he is. Yeah, he wanted to be transparent with yeah. everyone and I, go, okay, this is going to take a little bit longer than we I got to be honest. Just letting you know. <laughs> I got to be honest. Uh, Death Stranding just looks like a confused mess, just even from all the trailers. <laughs> Right, are you That's reading? what he wants everybody to see I right know. now, though. And yes. I was getting to that, Kojima's Leo. just got that weird thought process. Muzi, uh, I gotta stop you because I was in the middle of something. I was trying to say it's a confused mess that Kojima is making, but it's got the same goddamn energy as this book I'm reading. <laughs> So I, I get I, that's what I, yeah I was gonna make that comparison as well. So yeah, I was trying to say House of Leaves and Death Stranding have the same energy. That that same look. That's not not look. That same just energy uh, emanating from them. Gotcha. That, that what and the fuckery. The, right. And the fact with this game is that we don't know. Like I said, we don't know the gameplay. We don't know what kind of game it's gonna be. It even makes it even more. Up in the air. Awesome. What I'd like well, is them to like, show a gameplay trailer. Kojima's enjoying doing this because Konami wouldn't let him. Mm -hmm. I, I think we will. I think if we do, I think we might get something at E3. I think it's just going to depend on how far along he gets. Fair enough. It, because well, Most likely, if we get something at E3 for it, it would be a trailer that they already had prepared for E3. There is one alternative that we could be getting. And that is, uh, we could be getting a Phantom Zero situation, in which he, he releases, like, remember how PT came out? Yeah. And that was, like, sort of the opening to what Silent Hills would have been? It wasn't even an opening. It was just, like, it was a playable teaser, a, a teaser of what to expect, right. like mechanics. Right. And, and in the same way, uh, Phantom Zeros did the same thing for Metal Gear Solid Five. Ground Zeros. Ground Zeros, sorry. Yeah. Ground Zeros did the same thing for Five. So... I could imagine... Yeah, but all Ground Zeroes did was... Because it was like, hey, look, we're releasing a game, and then everybody's like, demo. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, grant, granted, it was kind of a glorified demo for 40 bucks, which is bad when you put it that way, but then again... It was Konami. Konami, so... It was Konami, and Kojima's not going to pull that. A uh, little... I hate to interrupt a little update real quick about the, us might be getting a trailer for... E E3 of Death Stranding, there is not because PlayStation is skipping E3 this year. Ah. Well, we'd Wait, be what? But that doesn't mean that Kojima Studio will skip it. Right. So yeah, we might get something on Xbox. It'll, it'll come Kojima, up. Kojima's working with just Sony. However, he has his own studio, which can show things. Mm -hmm. We never know. Yeah. Even, though it is a, even though it's a PS4 exclusive game, we may never know. Right. Uh, it might be PS5 exclusive because odds are we're getting a PS5 announced for 2020. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not holding any money out on that. I'm I not, seriously doubt it uh, because maybe, by we, now, if they were giving a PS5 announcement, we would have all this stuff floating around the internet because they can not keep it to the point where there is absolutely no leaks. Give and it to more years. There isn't even a. There isn't even any like trademark stuff floating around either. Right. And that's usually the precursor to a new system. Exactly. Even with something like we've seen it always with uh, Project Dolphin and everything that Nintendo has done. Yeah, too. they mm. can't hide the trademark stuff. Like so, they can't yeah. keep that secret. It's yeah. so, or we'll like the Project oh, NX, which was the Switch. There you go. Um, uh, we have leaks can, that are suggesting that Borderlands 3 is going to be released at PAX. Oh, God. Well, it's not really so much a leak as it is Gearbox going, hey, looky, looky. Oh, they did confirm it, okay. Yeah, Randy Pitchford basically <laughs> showed up with a blurred out image of the Borderlands logo saying, expect this at E3 or something. Okay. It, yeah, it, PAX East, oh, PAX East. Yeah. Also, a few days ago, they released a picture that said March 28th, Boston, Massachusetts, and it's in the... Like, it, the style of Borderlands. Okay. Yeah. Which, which is the data PAX East. Yeah, and, like, Randy Pitchford isn't even being subtle about this, because he, he showed, like, a oh, picture of PAX know. East with, like, a big three. <laughs> okay. Uh, Akari? What? You said you had something? No. Okay. Um, but, yeah, so we should definitely see more details uh, after PAX East about the game and see uh, where they're going with it, because I know they, they so far have had a storyline thing going for Borderlands, which has been my preference over to say something like uh, Anthem or even Destiny. 
So I'm I'm curious to see where they're going with this one. Eh, I've never been a Borderlands oh. fan. Because you figure some people prefer Borderlands. You know, it's got a slight plot, and you still get to run around and sh- a bunch of crap. Right. And then there's some people who like games like Destiny and Anthem that they're not as caring as much about that. They just want to go around and shoot crap, which is perfectly fine. Sure. It's, right. It all comes down to your preference and what you're in the mood for that day. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, we have a whole bunch of cartoon and movie news, so strap in because uh, we got quite a bit to go through. Yeah. Um, so first off, Movie Sonic, after after weeks of speculation, has officially been revealed. Eh. Parts of this, mm-hmm. my childhood is going, why? Am I the only one that actually thinks this doesn't look that bad? People that it's not as reaction. bad as it could have been. But my childhood, the only reason my childhood is going, why, is because I didn't really need this. Yeah. Hey, look. Still looks better than the stupid anime they put like you like decades ago. Wait, no, you mean Sonic X? Need this. No, no, no. The other anime. There was the another OVA with Metal Sonic. Oh, oh, that one. Oh, we don't talk about we that. Still, we yeah. still didn't need this though. Is why my childhood is going yeah. like this. I, but I, why? I, I imagine <laughs> we're. I imagine we're going to scar many many children now. In the same way that the Super Mario Brothers live action movie scarred us, if any of us actually saw it. I'm going to be honest, this movie might be less scarring than Super Mario Brothers. I agree with you on that. It'll be less scarring, but it'll well, still Okay, be... less scarring to us. But to little but kids. But kids who didn't grow up with the crap we did. Okay. This will scar them more, because they didn't have the precursor of like super mario movie and all that right wait are kids even from like that generation even familiar with a good sonic game sonic mania oh probably not well other than sonic this, mania, is, essentially like, poke, this is essentially poking a corpse <laughs> i mean that has been that has been sega team's plan for years at this point again i actually found something out you know what ha- why uh sega was so successful in america why because of Sega America. Sega did sh- did horrible in Japan. Mm. Mm-hmm. And apparently Sega Japan did everything opposite. Like, like a normal businessman would give like them, say, advice on how to run their company. Right. Sega Japan would do the exact opposite and say, fuck it. Mm-hmm. And now they're owned by Nintendo. Mm. Um... What else do we have? Um, I know that they also have leaked movie details in terms of an overall plot. And that's where I'm sad to say it kind of does pull like a Sonic X thing because there are heavy interactions with human characters for Sonic. Yeah, and apparently Sonic gets a girlfriend that isn't Amy that I think is human. Oh. Oh, did we not learn from Sonic 06? Nope. Did They're we poking not... a corpse. They're poking a damn corpse. <laughs> They're poking the oh. corpse. And, and the go- a, and wait, the- wait, hold on. What are you saying, Akari? And now, I hate to interrupt this little thing, and I this is a little interjection of what to add really quickly. They're making a sequel to Transformers The Last Night. I'm sorry, I thought that was supposed to be the last movie. No. Nope. I told you guys, it's never the last movie. No, I thought, they were, I thought they were supposed to go to a Bumblebee movie. I thought they were doing like a Bumblebee arc. It did go to a Bumblebee movie. Yeah, but I thought Which that was Which actually be... was a really good movie. Yeah, but I thought like they were going to continue Bumblebee's story. I thought that was like a soft reboot of the series. No, Guess Bumblebee not. literally is what happened like right before the rest of them started falling to Earth. <sighs> that is literally how the movie ends. He is standing with Optimus, and they are watching what looks like meteors, like in the first one, you know, falling down to Earth. Uh, how many times has this, like... Because this is all considered one film series, right? Mm-hmm. How many times has it been I rebooted? I did like Bumblebee, though. I think they've rebooted it, like, three separate times at this point. Maybe? Well, I know they kicked out Shia LaBeouf. Can I honestly, he essentially kicked himself out. Yeah, can I honestly Pretty say, much. like... He was the most entertaining part of the movies, the first movies. I, he annoyed the crap out of me. I could somewhat tolerate the first movie. After that, I was like, why? 
at that point when I'm watching them at home, like the second and third one, I'm like skipping through his parts just to get back to the Transformers. Why do you even have just... them? Are you that desperate for entertainment? Go watch a Marvel movie instead. But I have those too. It's Go watch okay. them instead. Chuck the Transformers movies <laughs> out and burn them. It's okay, Rado. Rado, calm down. The only movie They're fun I to own, riff. The only one I own is the first one, and that's it. Nothing else. I will forgive you for that, Akari. Muzi? Well, I, hate, I, hate I, I the have the rest of them only because it came in a set and it was the same price as the first. Oh, okay. At that point, it's economical. <laughs> At that point, yeah. it is economical, but I would take the rest of the movies and just put them into the dumpster. You know what? No, no, no. It's, it's what's, that, what's that thing? Clay pigeon. Make the rest of the movies clay pigeons. There you go. Pull! <laughs> you know what? I don't, think I've ever, I don't think I've ever seen the uh, 80s cartoon version of the movies. The 80s. <laughs> the one that I saw was the kind of anime esque one in the 2000s with the Minitrons. Oh, yeah. And, like, the ending arc of that one was, like, a battle against Unicron. Mm-hmm. Because, of course, it had to be Unicron. Right. Duh. But, yeah, that's the one I remember seeing as a kid. That was the one yeah, that, but like... that, that was an anime. No, I'm talking. No, the, the car- these actually had movie releases. Yeah. These actually had theater releases. Hmm. But uh, okay. anyway, that's, an, that's another topic. There was actually um, a sequel to that anime one, too. I think it was called Transformers Energon. Yeah, I, yeah, it was. Um, let's, uh, it's a real shame that Legend isn't here for this next one because he'd probably be squeeing out the entire room. Uh, yes. Capcom. Or be very apprehensive. Given his way that he reviews anime, that's true. Uh, Capcom plans to bring Dragon's Dogma to the Aniverse. Through Netflix. <laughs> oh, Okay, this might be good. Netflix is very smart about grabbing properties while they can, but letting the company themselves finish their product. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Look, look how good the Castlevania anime came out yeah. with two good seasons. What? I mean, hell, they even got a property done by the people who did Avatar The Last Airbender, and they just let the team do their thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What I'm saying is we need to find out who's going to be writing this damn story. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Um, Netflix's upcoming anime series, Studio Anima, Alter Carbon, Received, Spriggan. Uh, I'm trying to see who is doing this particular one. Uh, Sublimation Incorporated is doing this one. Who? I'm not familiar with them. Uh, I am not either, but apparently they are doing uh, 3D CGI. Which unfortunately, me it brings me to Berserk 2018. Ugh. They're also using their own brand of the cell shaded and the, the cell shading might work out, but I have been tainted in terms of 3D after what happened with Berserk. Yeah, like I don't trust. 3D anime at all. Like it was actually getting better. I mean, I mean, when we, we when we saw uh, Re- uh, Return of Broly, or the the Broly movie, they did use three D because they were using some of the Bandai Namco game engine for that. Yeah, there's only one three D CGI anime that I watched that I enjoyed because half the time I couldn't tell it was CGI. And which one was that? Hoseki no Kumi, oh. Land of the Lustrous. Oh, okay. That's actually a good anime. I'd recommend checking it out. That okay. was good 3D, C- 3D CGI. Okay. And it was basically beautiful gem anime girls doing cute things. Oh, yes. I have seen that <laughs> one, yes. I have seen clips of that, yes. Yeah. It's actually really good, and the story's kind of like a ship of Theseus sort of thing. Interesting. Yeah, because they're gem people, and their memories are within their gem crystal and structure and if they lose a part of that they lose that specific memory mm. and the main character Foss is like a weak phosphosphalite yes and so her body's really brittle and so she's lost her legs had them replaced with amber she's lost her arms and had them replaced with gold mm. and so she's lost a lot of her memories it's kind of changed personality throughout the, the anime okay so check it out actually it's really good all right um the next uh, three stories, I would basically re- re- uh, reprise them as the good, the bad, and the old. Didn't so, we do this last time with the Aladdin being the ugly? Yes, but that was the, <laughs> the good, the bad, and the blue balls. So, uh, oh critical God. role. 
which is, for those who don't know, is a major uh, uh, role-playing uh, D&D uh, uh, stream, is actually going to go ahead and go live, is going to go animated. And originally, all they wanted to do was make a movie, but they made so much damn money, they're going to do a too. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, Critical Role is a live, uh, live stream featuring famed voice actor and GM Matthew Mercer. Mm-hmm. Um, he is, go he actually, he, you may know him as the American voice for Jotaro, as well as Overwatch's McCree. What? Yes. Um, uh, among them also include voice actors such as Laura Bailey, uh, Taylor Jaff, Ashley Johnson, Leon O'Brien, Marsha Ray, Sam Regal, and Travis Willingham. Okay, so this isn't, this isn't the one that I've seen on, like, Verb, where Patton Oswalt's, like, one of the... No, 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 Pat, Patton Oswalt has his own show. Yeah. But, uh, oh. but Matthew Mercer's a critical role. They do different, uh, uh, different campaigns, and so they have currently up to 2,000, uh, 200,000 Twitch followers, and their Kickstarter has raised over, almost, uh, over $7 million. At the time of recording this. Jesus Christ. Yes. Actually, it's currently at sitting at 7.4 million with 33 days to go. Did they already reach their Jeez. goal? They have reached their, they are almost about to be reach their goal tenfold. They're nice. originally asking was 750k. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Oh shit. <laughs> yes, yeah, so well, this might be interesting to watch. It, it is they definitely do a lot of uh, there's definitely a lot of animated uh, like screen uh, uh, moments that independent artists have done, but you can always go back and go see their actual snippets. Mm -hmm. And so it's very just interesting if you want to see professional voice actors doing Dungeons and Dragons and just watching them play and act. Okay, when they make this like an animated series, you, me, Legend, Tails, and Buck need to sit down and watch this shit. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. <laughs> Because that's our D&D &D group, and oh god. Yeah, um, so yeah, it's definitely looking forward, of course. They have still an entire month to get even more money, so <laughs> I, am predict I am predicting they top out at 10 million. That's my prediction right now. You're predicting they'll top out at 10 million? What do you guys think? Uh, honestly, I don't know, because I don't really follow like <laughs> this kind of stuff. Well, tabletop. Yeah. We, we've been watching a completely <laughs> different Kickstarter. <laughs> so, yeah, this this kind of Kickstarter is kind of out of our reach, if you know what we mean. We, we've been keeping track of the Riff Tracks live one for this year. You know, you know it's a shame that you're not really into uh, D and D that much, Akari, because I think you'd be really good at it. It's not that I'm not into it. It's just I have never met anybody that has. That plays it. If uh, if I ever get can be if I ever get around to actually learning how to do the online system, I can probably go ahead and teach you some of the basics. Okay. So uh, I, um, that'll be something to look forward to in the future. Yeah. Someone no, better with, with be um, seven days left to go on their Kickstart. They've already made four hundred and eighteen thousand uh, dollars. Who are you talking about, Muzi? The Rift Tracks one. Oh, the Rift Tracks. Rift tracks. They, that's but very... they only wanted to make it to 250000 that, That's very respectable. <laughs> no shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Now for the bad. Doom oh, okay. movie is someone being... Better, someone, someone better hold me back because I'm about to go on a rampage just about this fucking right. thing. S settle down, Akari. Settle down. Uh, uh, Doom movie being made with id software not even behind even behind this at all. Yes. They're like, we're not touching this. This yep. is not our thing. Yep. Uh, Doom Annihilation is said to be a new direct-to-video adaptation of the story franchise. Ugh. No. No. I, I thought we were beyond the point of direct-to-video. I thought that had been erased. Yeah, haven't they learned the fact that if you add the bunch of the fact if you add Annihilation to any kind of movie, it's gonna suck ass. Mortal Kombat. Does anyone remember Mortal Kombat Annihilation? Yes. Let's see, Annihil. This you add anything that ends with Annihilation or anything that begins with R E, with the exception of Resident Evil. But you know what I mean, like <laughs> Revengeance. Uh, well, Revengeance was actually kind of funny, but re the Revenge, the Return. 
revival, redemption, I, resurrection. Okay. I've seen this trailer, and I'm like, no. No. <laughs> okay, a- apparently it's going to be, it is a, Doom Annihilation comes to us by way of Universal 1440 Entertainment, a subdivision of Universal Pictures, and basically is going to feature, um, let's see, uh, Tony Giglio, uh, Amy Manson, Louis Mandalore, Hari Dillon, and Nina Bergman. Okay, I know none of those, but who's the director? Is it Uwe Boll? No, the director Uwe is Boll. Tony Giglio. The, the the only notable one that he, the only notable movie he has is uh, the SWAT movie. What? I remember that movie. That movie was okay. Yeah, it was an okay movie, but I'm not sure about him being on uh, Doom mm. Annihilation. I gotta oh, ask, I'm... how the hell can they make this movie if its software isn't backing it? Because I think they got the rights for it when they made the first Doom movie. Uh, it's and that's much of the fact that it gets back. The controversy of this gets much better because the fact I just saw that anyone who's hating on the trailer of the movie is being labeled as sexist. Oh yes, because uh, Amy Manson is the is is the lead actress who is. Oh my god! I can't believe they actually named her that. What? Her character's name is Joan Dark. Wait, this is a, this is an inspiration from uh, what's per- that? What's a perfect, perfect Dark? Perfect Dark. Uh, that hurts two gaming franchises in one movie. Hand, meet forehead. Um, let me just look up some of her film credits. Um, Blood Monkey, Eddie. Yeah, this is a not a well-known actress, to be sure. So B-list or D- or C-list? I wouldn't know. I I, I don't know where even to begin with that. Apparently, she was in Once Upon a Time as Meridia. Meridia. Or Mer- Merida, as in the Scottish princess. In the live-action Disney Merida. sitcom. Yeah, Merida. Okay. So, again, just really weird place to be coming out of. I can see why people would not have uh, hope in this, in this particular installation. Yeah, this is looking... Well, especially when, you know, the actual Doom Twitter... Not affiliated with. Yeah, that, that, even they have no confidence in this. Yeah, that's just that's just a damning. For, that's just a damning. Uh, they just phrase. don't want to be blamed if it really, really bombs. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah, and they're like, we have nothing to do with this shit. If it ends up sucking, it's not on us. Yeah, right. this ain't us. All right. Lastly, uh, lastly, in this trio of of announcements, uh, pull out the walker. Yeah, bring out the walker because uh, John Rambo is out for Last Blood. Last Blood. Yes. <laughs> As opposed to First Blood, which was the name. Which was Can the I be honest of- here? Yes. I, after, I mean, I love First Blood. I love, I love, even though the sequels I came after are stupid as hell, but they're, I just love just Sylvester Stallone just shooting the shit out of people. I just want to see how over the top this is going to be. Well, they're going to have to mount the guns on his walker. Uh, allow me to rephrase in case you, you missed the, uh, because we kind of jumped the gun on this one. 72-year-old Sylvester Stallone is going to be starring in this movie. Last Blood. Didn't they make a, another Rambo movie not that long ago called, like, John Rambo or some shit? Yeah, it was, was John Rambo. years ago. Yes, it was John Rambo. Oh, get it was John Rambo. And for the record, for those who do not know the math, it has been 37 years since the first Rambo movie. And 11 years since the last one they did. Yep. Just, like I said, just get the walker, mount the guns on it, get him, like, a bran muffin, some mm-hmm. prune juice. Oh, and this, and, and this is in, this is in fine taste. The, uh, story here, uh, uh, is that Ranch Hand Rambo, working on a farm along the U.S.-Mexico border, is searching for his friend's kidnapped daughter. And so his adversaries slash eventual victims this time are a violent Mexican drug cartel, so he won't be going to arbitration to get her back. <laughs> oh, I'm, re- I'm reading directly from the Polygon article for that one. <sighs> this is going to be good. So, and that's... <sighs> given the fact that... It's topical. It's topical, and given the fact that 
Leo, Legend, and I live on the border? This is kind of... Eh? It's probably going to be on, like, Arizona or something. I know it's going to be, like, filmed in Arizona, but... <clears throat> You know it's... We'll see. Just, like, we'll have to wait and see before we can go ahead and pan it. I know, I know, but this is sounding... This is... so It doesn't It doesn't rub you the right way. Yeah. Okay. But then again, the Rambo movies were never my thing to begin with. So. All right, fair enough. And, you, Akari, you said you're excited? I am excited. Like I said, I know the sequels are dumb. I just I just, just go in with an open mind as just see Vesta or Salon just beat the shit out of people. That's pretty just much to it. turn your brain off Random. entirely. There you go. She just said it right there. Random people just shooting the shit out of people right there. <laughs> yep. All right. As long as it's You're not, not that important. You're not going into case. those kind of movies for plot anyway. No. Right. That's true. Yeah. Uh, the only one that had plot was the first movie. That's pretty much it. All right. Fair um, enough. Fair enough. We have one last. We have one last show. Uh. One last little story here, and this one's actually rather nice. It's kind of a combination of video game and uh, nostalgia, um, and movie, I mean, and a TV show. Ev- everyone saw what happened with um, Smash Brothers and how it turns out Life Lo- uh, Lifelight actually had lyrics to it. Yeah, written by uh, uh, Sakurai himself. Right, even though they don't make a goddamn lick of sense. Well, it's supposed to be inspirational, but anyway. 30 years after after its original release, uh, the moon theme is confirmed to have lyrics by Disney. So, just so you know, we're talking about the moon theme from the DuckTales game. The original back oh. from 1989. Yes. And it has lyrics sung by Huey, Dewey, and Louie's mom. Della. Della. Who, who is confirmed in, by the cartoon... To be a uh, an astron- an astronaut with a with a leg prosthetic, who was who was lost into space. Yeah, she's literally on the moon. Yeah, and she literally sings the theme to a baby space alien to calm it down from crying. I just uh, saw it. See, it's really this cute. sounds kind of funky, but the show is actually good. Yeah, it's, well, it's Ducktales. It's of course it's going to be completely goddamn ridiculous. No, but it's actually but like. I think one of the complaints that we have all had, at least at some point, is that there are modern cartoons that we cannot absolutely stand. Oh, of course. So the fact that this coming out, not only is it like does it have its moments, but it's actually good quality product. That is a rarity nowadays. Oh yeah, it's not characters banking- that didn't have personality have personality now. Yeah, they're not banking entirely on nostalgia, which is and good. And backstory. There's actual backstory for characters. It's always a wonderful thing when you actually have. Uh, things go off the way that they do. Oh, uh, and, and what makes this even better is who was one of the co-writers of the song. Who was one of the co-writers? None other than Shovel Knight composer himself, Jake Kaufman. Ah, uh, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. I was like, wait a minute. I saw it because I've read the articles. The song was written by Jake Kaufman, Mike Mueller, Mark Mueller, and John Smith. And I'm like, I'm thinking the Jake Kaufman, and it pulled it right up. Yep. Yeah, that's awesome. So Kaufman, who made the uh, the godly um, Shovel Knight uh, uh, comp- uh, soundtrack, yeah, which is, and also wrote the entire Big Bad Bosses album. Oh yeah, but like so, Shovel Knight was sort of an homage to Ducktales originally. So we've gone full we, goddamn we have, circle. We have come full circle. Yes, pretty that much. Is amazing. Yeah, this series has successfully actually given Magica backstory it's it's ridiculous they gave magic like the wicked goes, du- duck lady yes. they gave her yes. backstory they've right? also there's a whole plot line where um she creates this one little girl to get scrooge's first dime because that's pretty much like his talisman that's him you know right <laughs> All right, I'm waiting. I, I'm at this point. I need to jump in so I can wait for them to eventually give an explanation for Maui Mallard, because that's where we're going at this point. If they're giving explanations for things like this, they have to explain Maui Mallard at some point. <laughs> I want my Cold Shadow connection. Damn it! You know we're eventually going to have to let's play that, right? Well, Legend and I will, but uh, yeah, because yeah. I ain't touching it. Yeah, but we'll get to that eventually. Um, what's coming up on the channel, Rado? Well, it's been a week, so coming Tuesday is the start of our next Let's Play. 
Kingdom Hearts 2. <laughs> oh, that's gonna be fun. That sounds like fun. In short, it's me playing the game as I drive Leo and Legend, these two chuckle fucks, through insanity, pretty much. I, I think we're driving you <laughs> to insanity in this one. I mean, we have... As far as, as far as, like, I am concerned, 2 is basically where I stopped when it came to Kingdom Hearts. Yeah. So everything after that is where I'm going to start poking holes in things. You're going to start poking <laughs> holes, and I'm going to start filling them up for you. Right. There you go. <laughs> yeah, we will. Uh, I, I think we'll be pretty much good. Yeah. But... Um, so, yeah, we're still doing that. We have the podcast on a back to a regular basis now, so uh, I think we're just going to stick with that. Yeah, pretty much. It's just going to be Kingdom Hearts and the podcast for a while. Uh, we've got quite a backlog of like episodes up, but Kingdom Hearts is just going to be uploaded every Tuesday and Thursday whenever YouTube will let me upload them. Right. <laughs> All right. Uh, in that case, this has been the Stardust Cast. This is Leo Force. This is Akari. This is Muzi. And this is Rado signing out. Later, guys. Jackpot.